What's the best way to construct a practice routine? It's a difficult question, but one thing I've found that's worked for me over my years of experience is always keeping it fresh by changing up the exercises that I include. And today I want to show you three math rock style exercises that you can add to your routine. And I'm also going to throw in a little bonus at the end for you. Hi, I'm Steve. I'm on a mission to help as many guitarists as possible get better at guitar by sharing my knowledge and experience with you. You'll find a link down below in the description for all of the exercises that you'll see in this video. Those are available to the lovely patrons and you can get access to a wealth of a back catalogue of all of the materials that I use on this channel and that helps support this channel. I can reinvest that money and make better content for you. Thank you. So moving into our first exercise, we're going to be leaning into the finger picking technique and this is utilised by a lot of math rock guitarists and we need to look no further than TTNG's Tim Collis to see the potentials of his finger twisting licks. <laughs> So leaving the finger gymnastics aside for the moment, we're just going to focus on our picking hand and developing dexterity there, and it means I need to change guitar. Okay, so now we're in standard tuning. This finger picking pattern, you're going to rest the palm of your hand on the bridge. Make sure you're not muting the strings, and uh, you're going to use one finger per string here. So you're going to use your thumb on the A string, your index on the D string, your middle finger on the G string, and your ring finger on the B string. So that way, you're not having to think about where each finger is all the time. They're just going to be dedicated to those strings as we move through these three chord shapes. It's a 7-8 picking pattern, just to give it a math rock kind of flair, and I'll play the pattern slowly for you first. So I really want you to get mesmerised with this picking pattern, keep going through it, take it slowly, but concentrate not on the chords that you're playing, but on the motion that you're using down here. Make sure you're not tensing up and just get mesmerized by it. Just, it will get so ingrained into your muscle memory that it will just become easier for you every time that you do this. Then you can start to add other exercises as well. And then that'll get you on that journey to playing all of those finger twisting licks, which is what we want to do. And eventually you won't really be thinking about it. be able to get on that journey to playing like uh, your favorite math rock guitarists. All right, so moving on to another prominent math rock technique, hybrid picking. And you're also going to hybrid pick the open B with your middle finger, so it sounds like this. So what is hybrid picking? Why is it useful? And more importantly, why should you use it? Well, hybrid picking is using your pick and fingers at the same time. And um, it allows a number of options that you couldn't do with just using a pick and just using fingers. So if you know the band Chan, they have a song called Book. And at the start of this song, we pluck these chords by using the pick and our fingers at the same time. And then by using the pick, we can play this run afterwards. And then the beauty of hybrid picking is, is also we can do these big string skipping jumps. So how can you learn this technique? Well, I want you to get started with this simple triplet kind of exercise. You're going to pick the low E string and then you're going to use your middle and your ring finger to play the rest of the strings. with a pick, you'll notice how much more effort you have to put in to do all the string skipping. <laughs> Can't even play it right, but yeah. So string, um, you get a different sound of course, but hybrid picking just makes it so much easier, right? So simple exercise, but it serves the point, and hopefully I've convinced you that hybrid picking is well worth adding to your list of techniques. So no video about math rock exercises would be complete without talking about the technique of finger tapping and the wonderful ways that math rock guitarists employ this technique. <laughs> So 
like hybrid picking, I'm not giving you a choice on this one. You have to learn this technique and start using it in your playing. You don't have to be overly fancy with it. Um, to be honest, the best ways it's often employed is just a little, little bit of peppering in here and there can be absolutely incredible in playing. So for this one, again, we're not going to go over all this finger gymnastics. We're just going to hone in on developing dexterity and strength within our fingers. And to do this, we're going to do an old technique of this the spider technique where we walk up chromatically. But instead, we're going to do this with finger tapping. Using your index finger, you're going to walk up chromatically hammering on i.e. finger tapping. And then when you get to this 8th fret on the ninth fret, you're going to introduce your index finger. A tip for technique here is anchor your thumb on the side of the neck. It's going to help you out with stability. And then you're going to walk up again chromatically from the ninth fret to the 12th fret. And if you're like me, my little finger is pretty weedy, so what I like to do is put my ring finger on top to give it some stability. A tip on muting as well is to always use the underside of your index finger between taps just to help keep the string muted. I mean, it's a bit of over dramatization there, but you know, you can hear the ringing between, which is ideally what we don't want. And we can just walk up all the other strings as well. Anyway, you get the idea. It's a really simple exercise to follow, but I tell you, it just really builds up your finger strength and your dexterity by just doing that. It's also a wonderful warm-up routine as well if you are going to be playing finger tapping in um, you know, whatever session that you're doing. So my bonus tip for you is with these techniques, often we learn them and we really don't have a reason why we're doing them. So what I would like you to do from today is set a particular goal. So we've got these three techniques. For example, if you take the finger tapping technique, the exercise that I taught you, you could use that to walk, work towards a goal, let's say learning one of your favorite riffs. So for example, if we took Tiny Moving Parts and we look at the intro to Always Focus. <laughs> By doing this technique, by practicing this technique, we could work towards the goal of learning that riff. That way we've got some kind of finish line in, in mind and we can also work towards that goal and we can see we actually achieve it by using this exercise. Of course, we want to look at other things such as you know what's been played, the music theory and such, but this is part of that puzzle that's going to help you get there. And once you've achieved that goal, it might be time to then look at that exercise. We can keep it in the bank and maybe let's introduce a new one that's going to help us achieve a different goal. So if you'd like more exercises, then please go and check out my Math Rock ebook. It's full of those as well as other useful information for learning Math Rock guitar. And I recommend checking out this video next. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much to the patrons that support this channel. And I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.